Welcome to my lecture online. Impulse and momentum are very intertwined. We really can't talk about one without the other. So, what is impulse? Well, impulse is a force, typically a very strong force, applied on an object over a very small amount of time. It typically is associated with a blow or a punch. And so, that's why sometimes we call it a momentary force acting on an object over a very small period of time. And we have two definitions of impulse. Impulse, we use the letter I to indicate impulse, and it's simply the force that's applied to the object multiplied time that small amount of time that elapses. Now, we can also talk about impulse in terms of how it changes the momentum of the object. Notice that a force applied to an object for a small amount of time will make the object move. It will give it, give it some final velocity, v final. And so m times v final will then be its momentum that it has acquired due to that force applied over a small amount of time. So when we try to define impulse in terms of change in momentum, notice that momentum is defined as mass times velocity. And typically the mass doesn't change, only the velocity changes, so it's equal to the mass times the change in velocity. And of course the change in velocity can be expressed in terms of v final minus v initial, so impulse can also be expressed as the mass times the final velocity minus the initial velocity. And we often utilize that particular concept. Now, impulse also makes a lot of sense when we look at it from a graphical representation. And so essentially, what you can see here is that an object is being, is being pushed by force over some time. So on the horizontal axis we have time, on the vertical axis we have force, and notice that the force continuously changes, increases to a maximum value, and then begins to wane and goes back to zero. For example, when you have a baseball being hit with a bat, typically the force which is a very small amount of time, maybe just a few one thousand of a second, but the force will increase to maximum value and then again drop down to zero over that short period of time. What we can also say is that the impulse is equal to the area underneath the force versus time curve. And so typically what we would have to do is identify the curve represented the force, which is a function of time, and then also realize for how long that contact lasts, and then we simply take a small amount of that, call it a di, and then we integrate it over the whole area underneath the curve. And so essentially, impulse is the integral of di, which is the, imp the integral of the force times dt. We'll show you an example of that so it actually makes some sense to you. But quite often, they will represent the force as a momentary force acting on a constant basis over a small amount of time. So that's called the average force. And so therefore we can say that if we're trying to calculate the momentum of an example like this, where a 50 Newton force is applied from 0.1 seconds to 0.2 seconds, so that the delta T is 0.1 seconds, we simply multiply the force times the time and to get the change in momentum or to get the impulse. So that would be the impulse. The impulse would simply be 5 kilogram meters per second, which is a 50 Newton force acting over one tenth of a second. Sometimes that's called the average force. We can also represent something like this more in a graphical situation where we have a triangle. The force increases, the force decreases. We don't have a curve like that. So therefore, when we're trying to find the impulse, it's relatively easy. The impulse is the area need to curve. And so therefore, we have to find the area of this triangle. Notice that the width of the triangle at the bottom on the base is 0.4. The height is 50 newtons. So the area would be 1 half the base times the height, 1 half 0.4 times 50, which is 10 kilogram meters per second for the impulse under that circumstance. Now what if we have something that is more like this? And so here we have the equation that's defined. The force is defined as minus t squared plus 4t, which is a quadratic equation. And so we could take a small little snip of that, and so we could say that there's a small amount of impulse, and the impulse would be the height, which is the force at that moment in time times the width of that, which is a small dt. So that's your small amount of impulse. And what we're going to do now is sum all these up. We're going to snip it all up in little pieces. We're going to add them all up, which is essentially integration. Notice that the time goes from 0 to 4 seconds, and the force goes from 0 to 4 newtons at its maximum. So the impulse is the integral of di going from time equals 0 to time equals 4. And di can be defined as the force, the vertical distance, which is the force, times the width, which is dt. 
And of course, the force is defined as minus t squared plus 4t, so we replace that by the equivalent function in terms of the time, times dt. We integrate that, so minus t squared plus 4t becomes minus t cubed over 3 plus 4t squared over 2. We evaluate it from 0 to 4. Of course, when plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get minus 64 over 3 plus 64 over 2. And when we then do the arithmetic, we end up with 32 over 3 or 10.67 kilograms meters per second for the impulse. So that is how we look at the impulse. That's how we calculate the impulse. It's simply the product of force times the time. And of course, depending upon how that's set up, if it's set up like this, it's easy. We simply multiply the average force times the time. But if it's not like that, then of course, we have to somehow calculate the area you need to curve either by using a geometric shape for which it is easy or we use integration when the curve is not quite as simplistic. And that is how we deal with impulse. Now in this next video we're going to combine impulse and momentum together to see how we utilize that to solve some additional momentum problems. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.